Terrible people are exactly that. They irritate you, they frustrate you, and they might even anger you. And sometimes they bring you to a point you discover something about yourself that you didn't even want to know. Thanks to a group of people that can only be described as absolute villains, I realised that I could actually hate someone. A pure, absolute hate that would shame anyone that harbours it. And I still carry this shameful hate, with my memories of that weekend keeping it alight. It came as a surprise, though I should have been expecting things not to go the way I wanted them to. All I was hoping for was a fun weekend with my friends, running through the woods pretending to be in a fantasy world. Of course, I erred terribly thinking that would be the way things went, and I have no excuse because it wasn't my first time at this particular LARP. The first time I had gone was a bit of an adventure, and while things worked out in the end, I think I managed to make more enemies than friends. I don't really regret anything I did. I'm even proud of some of it, but I wasn't in a rush to repeat it. I'm not a fan of LARPing. It's probably because I'm never on the same page as everyone else. Actually, I think it's because no one is ever on the same page as everyone else. Everyone has their own ideas on how things should be. And when all these little individual universes collide, it's inevitable that conflicts occur. At best, it's just people getting into small arguments out of confusion. At worst, we get huge battles filled with anger and malice that leave everyone scared in one way or another. While I'm not a fan of LARPing, I have some friends who are. One goes running through the woods nearly every month playing a mage named Hargel Nightwater, and he's the one who managed to convince me to go once to a new LARP with him. While I'm sure I could find plenty to complain about him, we've been friends for too long for me to even bother pointing out his faults. And I guess the reason we have been friends this long is because he has a way of exceeding my expectations every so often in spectacular ways. I also went with one other friend, who played a warrior named Lithcloud. While neither of us are going to be trying out for the Olympic team, we're both fairly athletic, and we usually end up competing against each other a fair bit. My first time at the new LARP was his first time as well, but we went a few more times afterwards with Hargill. Dedicating a whole weekend for something like LARPing isn't as easy as it was in the past, and I usually had more than one excuse not to go with them. I'll admit, I do somewhat regret not going with them during those times, for a wide variety of reasons. One of them being not being able to see the friends I made at the LARP one time I went. I met up with two of them a few times after that, since one invited Hargill, Lith and I to play some Dungeons and Dragons with him. He had helped me out a fair bit at the event, and while he spends most of his time playing as a monster NPC, he sometimes plays as a mage named Valene. Valene also invited one other person from the LARP, a guy some five years older than the rest of us, and one of the most skilled warriors had fought at LARP. He always just played as monsters, though he admitted that he did start a character named Ren that he had played once, often before we'd start playing D&D. He'd challenge me to a little foam weapon sparring outside, and everyone would end up joining in for a few rounds. I'll admit that I really like the fighting aspects of LARP, there's something about fighting with foam weapons that's a little bit different from a sport like fencing or an attempt at recreating historical techniques. There's this level of childish innocence to it, something that it makes adults fighting against each other seem ridiculous. While we all end up taking it more seriously than we should, our little battles would end up with all of us in pretty good moods. Villain is not a bad fighter, a little bit better than Hargill, but both of them are better casters than warriors. Lith managed to learn quite a bit at the events I missed, mostly on how to use his shield better, but that just meant I quickly learned new ways of getting past his shield. In the end, I think it's fair to say in a straight one-on-one fight, I can defeat him four times out of five, but he works better as part of a team with someone. Rend is definitely the most skilled out of all of us, but that doesn't mean I don't beat him on occasion. He seems to really enjoy fighting with me, and has often said that I'm an entertaining fighter. Sometimes during our D&D games, the topic of LARP would spring up. And while I felt a little out of the loop, I didn't really feel any urge to go. I still kept it pretty low on my priorities, which meant that I usually had an excuse not to go when they tried to convince me. While hanging out with my friends was great, work and school would often cut into one of the three days of the monthly events, and that would be enough to discourage me from going at all. Finally, Hargill told me something that made LARPing rocket upwards on my list of priorities. It was after an event that Lith had not gone with him, 
and he came back both angry and depressed. He and Lith had started a noble house, which had grown fairly large, with nine people in it. With only something over a hundred people at each event, this made House Cerberus pretty influential, especially since Hargel's character was one of the strongest mages in the game. House Cerberus made it a point to reach out to new and younger players, and Hargel would often negotiate with LARPing directors, the plot masters, to send out monsters with stats that these players could handle. Villain was one of those who suggested he do this, and by this method the house had grown rather quickly, though its members weren't particularly strong. At the last event, House Cerberus had been destroyed, by Archduke Ulsic. It shows how weak my control of emotions is, in that I'm angry just remembering this man. Perhaps it's not a matter of weakness in control, but it's just how much hatred I have towards that foul bastard. He was a partial owner of the LARP, and one of its plot masters. He had played an extremely powerful mage named Ulsic, who had decided to fix mistakes he had made by trying to have my character executed. Through the combined efforts of a group of people, his character was permanently killed, along with almost the entirety of his noble house. In fact, the only survivor was Hargel, who also happened to be the one to deliver the final blow that killed Ulsic. I didn't think Ulsic would take things gracefully, but Hargel had reported for the last few months that Ulsic had kept quiet, only performing plot master duties and not much else. Not caring too much about the LARP to have paid attention to Ulsic's inactivity, I realise now that he should have known that he was scheming something. Hargel told his story bitterly. Through some bullshit ritual, the Archduke Ulsic was resurrected as a lich, and he and the group of LARPers sought revenge against House Cerberus. They simply kept killing the weaker members over and over again, until they were either permanently dead or had professed that they no longer were in the house. Harjo was the only one who had remained alive in the house, having stayed in the woods running for the majority of the event. Lith, having not been there, was the only other remaining member of the house, and it didn't seem like the two of them would be able to restore their houses while the lich Ulsic wanted to kill them. I knew Ulsic was a petty person, but I didn't think he would take his character's death so poorly. He had probably waited until House Cerberus was nice and big before he decided to crush it. Harjo kept padding his story by telling me just how impressively he hid in the woods, but I pressed him for details on Ulsic and his followers. Harjo only knew vague rumours, and himself had not seen the lich, having run into the woods the second he had heard the group was hunting House Cerberus members. Lith was furious. He really only cared about one thing at the LARP, the noble house he had started. He swore with every second breath that he started planning his own revenge. While he and Harjo both had stronger characters than when I had been with them, remembering that it took almost an entire army to waken Ulsic the first time he died, then most of Lith's plans seemed foolish. Ulsic as a lich was something I didn't want to deal with, but something about that didn't seem right. If I knew the man as well as I thought I did, he wouldn't be content with being an undead monster. He was definitely either planning something further, or there was something that Hargel didn't know. Lith's final plan ended up being not much of one. With a month before the next event, we would train and then go and restore the house. This was probably my last chance to avoid everything, to tell him that his plan was stupid and to just go and cut his losses. But the thought that I'd be the one to finalise Ulsic's revenge was just too strong. I knew it was just a silly LARP that didn't mean anything, but that man deserved no victories. Lith's idea of training was badgering me to fight with him whenever we had a free moment. While he was enthusiastic during the first week, he lost all motivation during the second and third, only regaining it during the last week before the event. Hargel likewise participated in the training, though he definitely spent more time just feeling hopeless and depressed. I knew that expecting the three of us to defeat Ulsic and his crew just by training for a month was ridiculous, but I also knew that Ulsic wasn't a very clever man, and that there had to be some way to foil his plans. There had to be something that I could do to make him regret ruining my friend's goals. Valen was a great help. He filled me in on details Hargel had not heard, and information that gave me a starting point for my own plans. With his promise to help us out from the monster side, I felt a little more confident though I still had no real plan. A month passed, and Harjo was pondering if they should abandon House Cerberus. Lith steadfastly refused, 
offering no reason behind his conviction. I don't think I simply wasted the month, but I didn't feel like any of us were prepared for what we were going to have to do. In part, my major plan was to first find out what was going on, and the best way to do that was to start off as monsters. Every player had to do a scheduled shift as a monster for the day of the event, and our plan was to be monsters on Friday, learn as much as we could, and then do what we needed to be done on Saturday and Sunday. It was a start, but it meant that if we didn't come up with a decent plan by Saturday, we'd probably all be permanently killed before we had a chance to do anything. I had considered staying as a monster for the entire event, but what I needed was complete freedom, something only players had, which included being able to kill whoever I wanted. Hargill, Lith and I packed our gear into the car and drove towards the campgrounds where the lark would be held. There was a little bit of nervous tension, none of us certain what would happen. Well, the last time I had packed with the idea we'd be doing some light camping, this time I was prepared for war. Earth-toned clothing, energy bars, canteen, triple-layered military sleeping bag, trail running shoes and more, just so I could get even the slightest advantage. When Hargill had seen what I had packed, he slipped in a ninja Halloween costume into his bag, which I could only hope he'd never have to use. When we had arrived at the grounds, they were just like I had remembered them. Though it was a fair bit colder, some distance from everything else, the campground was fairly large and scheduled, with cabins spread out throughout the grounds. The largest parking lot was not far from the largest cabin, which was used as an inn during play and was the major centre for player activity. We had arrived a little early, just so we could make sure we would be able to sign up for the Friday monster assignments before they got filled up. Unsurprisingly, Ulsik was already there, a broad grin on his face. Seeing him again was exactly what I needed. There's nothing like a pearly, aging, overweight man with ridiculous braids in his beard and hair walking towards you with a shit-eating grin on his face to provide you with motivation. Any doubt I had before was wiped away. He seemed very happy to see that I had returned to his LARP. There was a brief moment where we both wondered whether or not we'd express hostilities right there and then. We both wondered whether it'd be better to pretend being friendly towards each other, whether there was any advantage in that. That matter was settled quickly. We both knew that we had in turn earned each other's hate and that there was no need for pretenses. He asked if we still planned on continuing with House Cerberus and I asked if he planned on having his character live through the weekend. He snorted before ambling off towards another group that had arrived. We registered ourselves, receiving our character sheets in the process. Nephim Festiva, my character, remained unchanged from the last time I played with him, with even his infantry just as I had left it. Hargill explained that as it was my second event, I wouldn't be levelling up, which seemed to catch the man in charge of the registration's interest. He said that I might be affected by changes in the rules that were going to be announced once the event had started, though he wasn't entirely certain. The three of us waited inside the inn, occasionally exchanging words between us while people passed us. We received a fair amount of scowls and most people didn't bother greeting us. Something I hadn't been expecting. Had Hargill and Lith done something to make House Cerberus so hated? I considered this for a moment, then realised that our low popularity was likely a part of all six schemes. There were still a few people that cheerfully said hello to us, though I had no certainty of their sincerity. When most of the people had gathered in the inn, I remembered most of them, or at least remembered the archetype they belonged to. This wasn't particularly combat oriented LARP, with most of the players either significantly overweight or underweight, and we had a good variety of the classic types of geeks and outcasts, with most in their 30s looking a little too excited for their age. There was a general feeling that this LARP was either their attempt at clinging to their youth, even if it was an imaginary one. There was a few more teenagers than there were last time. Among them, a cluster of girls dressed entirely in black who seemed like they were all friends. Some of the older men kept walking over to them, but they seemed content keeping to themselves. Finally, at five o'clock, the three plot masters took their places at one end of the large hall. All six stood in the centre, smiling so much that it should have been outlawed, flanked by two older men. One I recognised as the man in charge of the monsters, who despite his age, probably his early sixties, was in great shape. The other man seemed even older, short and wide, with a white beard that reminded me of garden gnomes. The two of them stood silently as Ulsic spoke, 
greeting everyone and announcing the start of the event. His foremost announcement was that a big changes were being made to the rules to help make things more fun and exciting for new players. To start, every player who had been to less than three events would immediately receive bonuses skill points and new low level skills would be available. This announcement was met with hoots and shouts that came from the back of the room. Everyone turned to look, though before I turned round, I had a good idea of who it could be. There were seven men, still obnoxiously cheering while all of us looked at them. They were all probably within one or two years of my age, and were all wearing different suits of armour. Compared to the rest of the people in the inn, they were far more imposing, each of them looking at the crowd like wolves surveying sheep. Ulsic grinned at their interruption, letting them cheer for a moment longer, before delivering the rest of the announcements. Valen had told me about these seven, and I ignored the rest of what Ulsic had to say, just so I could observe them better. They were from a medieval combat recreation society, and had been invited by Ulsic himself to join this LARP. Under his banner, they had been the ones who had chiefly dismantled House Cerberus, and it seemed like Ulsic was allowing them to pull favours. One of them noticed me, but I simply kept grinning, even as I realised I had started to scar at the grip. Thankfully, it wasn't just them who would be receiving bonus skill points, since I and a fair amount of the teenagers had only been here one or two previous events. If Ulsic was letting us all get these bonuses, it probably meant he wanted an excuse to boost up his new level squad and ensure their favour, as well as the favour of all the new players. He had probably not considered that I would be returning to this event, and I was going to make sure the bonus skill I received went towards making him regret his oversight. After the announcements, I went with my friends over to the registration corner and was impressed to see what kind of new abilities were available and which I could get with a few bonus points I had received. They almost all were for warriors, which suited me fine, as Nephim Festiva was a warrior mage. Most of these new abilities were much stronger than other beginner skills and had odd requirements like needing to use specific weapons or having a certain amount of HP. After finishing, my character was still several shades weaker than Lith, and much, much weaker than Hargel, who was one of the strongest people in the game, but I felt content. I increased my HP to 18, and had sworn off all other weapons to specialise in two-handed swords. I had two fire spells, one I could use as much as I wanted and deal one damage, and one that dealt seven damage that I could use once a day. An ice spell. The target had his legs froze, which meant he couldn't move his feet from where they were. And a weak healing spell. I could heal four HP three times a day, which I had from previous events. With my skill bonus, I chose two that seemed ridiculously powerful, at least to me. The first was the ability to swing my two-handed sword with one hand. Ordinarily, without the ability, I would not be allowed to call out damage unless both my hands were on the sword. The second ability complemented with my first fairly well, simply called Bracers. It allowed me to block weapons with my hand and forearms. I didn't intend to actually actively block with them, but preventing them from being a target was definitely worth the points I put into it. When I had finished, we made our way towards the cave, a special cabin where the monsters had their headquarters. Some of the other players were also headed towards it but they kept their distance from us. When we arrived at the cave, we were greeted by the old man in charge of the monsters, as well as by Valen and Rand, who had rather anxious looks on their faces. The rest of the people in the cave were the people who were going to be playing as monsters the entire event. Compared to the players at the inn, they were all rather athletic, and many of them were fairly skilled in foam weapon combat. I recognised a few, and they greeted me rather warmly, as I managed to impress them a little at the last event I had been to. I began to discuss things with Valen, telling him about the bonus skills and my opinion of all six little squad, but a large group suddenly entered the cave, which became rather quiet. These were the new players, who would be spending their first day as monsters so that they could learn the rules of combat. There were several teenagers, including the group of goth girls, but there was also two older players, and one man who looked like he didn't really belong here. He must have been well over 70, and unlike the monster leader, age had taken a toll on him fairly harshly. When the monster leader told the new players to choose some weapons from the piles that were against the walls, he hobbled rather than walked, and it looked like he had trouble lifting even one of the smaller swords. After the monster leader led the new players out, the rest of the monsters began moving out, 
wearing a variety of costumes. Eventually, one of the monsters saw our grip and assigned us to head out as bog trolls. Looking at the stats card I was handed, I was glad to see that they were decently strong, 35 HP and dealt bonus damage, but most importantly that they could use any two-handed weapon. I scanned the weapon piles, daring to hope. After shifting through some, I found what I was looking for. The two-handed sword I had used last time, it was still in great condition, almost no different from when I had returned it here. Sadly, it no longer had the ribbons that signified it was being magical, but that, in a way, was alright because the magic weapon my character had been carrying had been destroyed last event. Even so, just having the same physical weapon was heartening. So look guys, I'm actually not here. I'm actually like, this is all pre-recorded. I did this about a week ago. Um, I hope you guys are enjoying it. I really, I, I love this story. Like, you know, I really enjoyed the original LARP camp and I've been meaning to do this one for a while. And I, I was actually, I actually started working on it whenever my channel got demonetized and then but I, it was all in text speech so i had to start again you know i really enjoy it i know you guys are gonna fucking love it and uh, it's gonna be caught up in quite a few parts but like it's coming i'm gonna get as many videos as I, as I can get done um i've got quite a few parts already recorded and stuff i just need to edit together so hopefully i manage to get a minimum i really hope i really hope now i'm speaking in the future now I really hope I get at least four to five parts ready for you guys and then I can finish it off when I get back. Or if we're lucky, maybe I can get it all done before that. Who knows? But look, as always guys, I really hope you guys enjoyed. Make sure to like, subscribe, check out the other channel. It's moved across to voice acting as well. I hope you guys are enjoying yourselves and I'll see you in the next video.